morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful October day. We're glad to have you with us. You may be seated. We've got a few announcements to be brought to your attention. First of all, happy birthday to Daniel Ray Dahl coming up this week and also to Danelda Bouchard. And um, also, as far as prayer is concerned, we'd ask that you would keep today in your prayers um, a little uh, a young lady by the name of Allison Brown. You don't know her, but she's the sister of Nick Brown and Sister Monte Candice. And uh, Allison had a fall in the giant tiger store this week. Uh, she fainted and it left her with a fractured skull and brain bleed. So she has. She's in the Montreal General Hospital. She's been unconscious for a number of days, but they have waked her up and she's recognizing people. So they're thinking she may be okay. She may be okay. But the prayers for her would be really appreciated. This afternoon, uh, uh, you may have received notice that the Bahornwa um, is celebrating its 190th anniversary as we are here this year. And so there's a service there at 2.30 and there's a reception afterwards. Uh, also next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. It'll be a family service. So we hope that you can all join us upstairs here. And also we will be uh, starting our collection or, uh, for the um, Samaritan's First Shoebox Ministry. So we'll have shoeboxes available if you want to take some home and put little gifts in it for children from various parts around the world. I think a lot of ours this year are going to Ukraine, so uh, you can put uh, winter stuff in there if you like, along with other other things. Uh, let me see now. And then the following Sunday is the soup luncheon, the 15th. And so um, if anybody would like to make soup, please let me know. I'll try and get a list of paper available. Maybe somebody pick up a piece of paper downstairs at coffee time and uh, you can write down if you'd like to make a soup and bring it with you, uh, that would be great. And then there's the uh, musical evening coming up on the 22nd. Uh, this, um, I don't have a bulletin, sorry, so what, what did you put in about the bulletin? Okay. okay. Oh, this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On this world. 
Worldwide Communion Sunday. May our worship launch that vision within us and through us. Let us worship God. And let us continue singing from number 402, and we'll sing verses 2, 3, and 4.
remember what your name is again, okay? What's your name, sweetheart? Kalel. Kalel. And what's your name, honey? Kawa. Kawa. And, and um, Maddie? And Kawa. Madison? Okay, I think she told me her name was Maddie last week. So there it is. It's her nickname. There you go. Well, my nickname is Al, okay? So there you go. And, and Connor? And Avery. Okay, and you began with an A. Okay, good to see you guys. I want to ask you, you all came from families this morning, right? Yeah, mom and dad, you came from families and everything like that. And it's, it's nice to be part of a family, isn't it? Brothers and sisters, things like that. It's great, eh? I want to ask you, have you ever flown in an airplane? You went to Florida when you're one month old, you flew then, and you probably don't remember flying, right? There's pictures of you flying, okay. So that's a good reminder, it's good to have pictures. You can't go because that's, because you're afraid of scared heights? I, I can appreciate that. I was, I, you know, I, I'm terrified of heights too. But you know what? I went up in a balloon. Avery, okay, pray flights, you know. It's something you, you pray about, sweetheart, and you, it, it can help after a while, okay? But my first airplane flight, I was terrified too, you know? You were just, you used to be a cry baby, but you were just sleeping when you were flying. I bet your mom and dad were pretty happy about that, eh? You were a quiet baby. Okay. That's, that's cool. You, you, but you talk a lot now, right? You got over it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? I was thinking, like, we were part of some families here. We have brothers and sisters and things like that, and that's great. But the Bible says, if we fly or go to a different part of the world, and we go into a church, We've got brothers and sisters in that church. We may have never met them before. I was thinking, you know, this little child here, I think this little child is down in Africa. This little child's got some problems with his legs and whatnot. But you know what? If we went into his or her church, we could say she's our sister or she's our brother. I think it's a little girl, you know? Kind of looks like you, eh, here? Yeah, yeah, you know? But, but this little girl probably lives in Africa. And, and Jesus says that if we love him, we're part of a huge family. So you've got your sister, you've got your brother, you know. But then if we love Jesus, we're part of a huge, huge family. And that we can celebrate that. And it's pretty wonderful, right? Eh? So just remember that when you come to church, you're part of a big, big family. That's pretty cool. And we're going to sing that about it today. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Okay? And I'll share this with you.
chapter 55, verses 1 to 5, found on page 598 in your pew Bible. An invitation to abundant life. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for the whip that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I make him a witness to the peoples, leader and communicator and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. <clears throat> Our second reading. Our second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 7, found on page 989. The first letter of John, the word of life. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you <clears throat> the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you <clears throat> what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. God is life. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is life and in him there is no darkness at all. So we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness. We lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. God. Well, today is a special day in many Christian churches because, as we know, today is regarded as World Communion Sunday or Worldwide Communion Sunday. This day was started back somewhere in the neighborhood of 1933 to 1936. Various commentators have different times given, years. But it was started by an American Presbyterian minister to encourage the unity of the Christian faith. And eventually it grew not only from the Presbyterian churches, but also to churches around the world. And there was a lot of division in the world at that time, and it brought Christians with their various ethnicities. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> You know what I mean, don't okay, you guys? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and languages. <laughs> to come together as brothers and sisters in God's family, in remembering who God is and what he has done for us through Jesus. And uh, expect that from our different backgrounds, we come with various feelings or attitudes towards this service based on our various perceptions of what this service is. Some denominations call this service the Lord's Supper, 
which it is. It was started by the Lord, as we recall that night when Jesus dined with his disciples on the eve before his crucifixion, saying, do this in remembrance of me, as he broke the, the bread and wine, as he used the bread and wine as symbols of his, of his body and blood. And so this practice does not only belong to just one denomination, it is the Lord's Supper intended for all believers, whoever and wherever they are. Some people call this service Holy Communion, which it is. The word communion means to experience another and to have close union with another. And so we we have to have a we we would look to have a, a, a sense of closeness with the risen Lord being with us. As the children's chorus goes, you know, God's not dead, he's still alive. I feel him in my heart, I feel him in my feet, I feel him all over me. Or as we sang earlier this morning, we are one as we come. A sense of togetherness with the Lord being in our midst. Some people call it the Eucharist, which it is. Our Roman Catholic friends, and maybe Anglican friends too, are more familiar with this word, but it's also a good one in that Eucharist means to give thanks. So indeed, how thankful we can be, right? That God loves us even to the point of dying for us so that we might live. And then some people call it a sacrament, which it is. Sacrament means oath of allegiance. And it originally meant the oath that a Roman soldier swore at the beginning of his military service. He swore that he would serve the emperor at his, even to the point of his own death. And every now and then throughout his career, the soldier would be asked to renew his sacrament, his oath of allegiance, his pledge of loyalty. So in this sacrament, we remember Christ's sacrament to us. He pledged his loyalty to us to his death. He kept that pledge all the way through death and beyond. <clears throat> so there's a little ecumenical history of what we're celebrating today with other churches and denominations and the different names by which this service is known. I doubt that um, wondering about this kept you awake at night. <laughs> what does all mean? It probably didn't keep you awake. But maybe it will bring a deeper meaning to you today. And you can store that information away someplace, just in case the subject comes up when you're having a conversation with somebody else. So now, how does this tie in with today's reflections title, The World's Thirst for Life? And how does this tie in with the scripture reading from Isaiah that Pat read, that beautiful invitation that says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come to me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I expect we all know that we need water to drink to survive. From what I recall, we can survive for a certain amount of time without food, but a much, much shorter time without water. Last week we read about the Israelites in the desert complaining about their need for food. And true to form, shortly after that, they complained about being thirsty. And again the Lord came to their aid. God had Moses strike a, a rock with his staff and out came flowing wonderful water. God supplied for their physical bodies on their journey. And in that beautiful passage of Isaiah today, this invitation to all who are thirsty to come freely to the waters has more to do not so much with physical water uh, for our, our physical bodies, but it has to do with soul thirst. Because in the following verses, Isaiah talks about being in relation with God and the blessings that come from it. People crave meaning and purpose in their lives. So often, we do all kinds of things, don't we? Looking to quench that
that thirst. And so often those things leave us feeling even more dry and thirsty. And of course, when Jesus came to earth, in one of his interactions, he confirms the same invitation that we find in Isaiah. When Jesus says, if a man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit. Those who believed in him would whom those who believed in him would later receive. Don't we want to feel an inner satisfaction and peace? Don't we want our soul thirst quenched? So how does this worldwide Lord's Supper, Communion, Eucharist, Sacrament tie in in St. John's letter, talking about his seeing Jesus, physically touching him and knowing that he's truly God's Son, come from God to give us life? The second passage that Patricia read to us from. Well, with some research I did this week, I discovered that John was writing to some people to clarify the truth about the Lord. So here's some more history. There was a group of people back then called the Gnostics. Um, and some of them were saying that Jesus was not a real human being. They were saying that somebody had touched Jesus and, and, um, uh, and that person's hand just kept on going and going through all kinds of softness. Like there was not the flesh and bone that we know is in a human being. So if that was the case, he said, that he wasn't really human. And then Jesus could not really identify with us the struggles we face as human beings. So that was one group of Gnostics talking like that. And there was another group of Gnostics that said that whereas there, there was a human body, that God's Spirit of Jesus came and inhabited that body, but before the actual crucifixion, Jesus had departed of the body. So therefore, Jesus, God, didn't really die. So it was all kind of a mirage. There's stuff that wasn't really happening there, they're saying. So these kinds of beliefs were really causing division and strife. So John wrote clarifying, basically saying, Okay, folks, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, listen to me, listen to me. You're mistaken in what you're teaching other people. We have seen with our own eyes, and we have touched them with our hands. He was meaning people who had lived with Jesus those three years before Jesus' crucifixion. They had lived with him for three years, walking with him, talking with him. They had been in contact with him, and they knew who he was. He was for real. They'd seen him dying on a cross. They'd seen him in his risen state. They knew he was for real. And so he said, we have seen with our own eyes, and we've touched with our hands, and we know that Jesus is for real. He truly is who he said he is. God, come to be with us. Remember again, John had been one of Jesus' disciples. He knew what he was talking about. And uh, we know that that kind of division about who Jesus is and what he did and does still goes on in our various uh, belief systems these days, too, don't they? There's so much debate. But we need to go back and study the scriptures and find out Jesus was, came from God, he's a, he, 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 he came physically, he was born of the Virgin Mary, he lived, he died, he rose, he died for us. And he rose from the dead, and he offers life to us. A minister was preaching in Philadelphia, and at the close of the service, a stranger came up to him and said, I don't like the way you spoke about the cross. I think that instead of emphasizing the death of Christ, it would be far better to preach Jesus, the teacher and example. The minister asked, okay, if I presented Christ in that way, would you be willing to follow him? And the man said, I certainly would. All right then, said the minister, let's take the first step. Jesus did not sin. Can you claim that for yourself? 
The man looked confused and somewhat surprised. And he said, well, no, I acknowledge that I sinned. And then the minister replied, then your greatest need is to have a savior, not an example. Don't we all as human beings, regardless of the color of our skin, or the language that we speak, or the places where we live, or the vehicle we drive or don't drive, or how much money we have or don't have in the bank, and all kinds of things that have, that, 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 um, have the deep, um, that we have, don't we also have the deep human need for, for meaning, for life restored, for the general healing of humanity? Jesus invites us to see ourselves for who we are. And oftentimes we're, we're pretty embarrassed and we'd rather Jesus would look the other way. But instead Jesus says, and he says to the whole world, to all people, regardless of who they are, come, I see you. And I love you. Let me wash you clean with what I did for you on the cross. Let me fill you with my refreshing spirit. And as I see you, I see those around you. And I love them with the same love. Come, be part of my forever kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing this beautiful old hymn written back in the 1800s. I heard the voice of Jesus. Number 626 in Voices United. <laughs>
for sharing the good news with the rest of the world. Bless us all, thank you for our prayers and our gifts in Jesus' name. In the early hours of the morning, while all was quiet and dark here in our homes, 
The sun was rising on the other side of the world. And with the dawn of this new day, God's people here began gathering for worship amid the sound. Uh, no, and with the dawn of this new day, God's people began gathering for worship amid the sounds of drums or pipes, string instruments or pianos and organs. Now we too join in this worldwide chorus of those who call upon the name of the Lord. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember especially that the scriptures are fulfilled as people will come from the east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. And so come, not because you want, or not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are strong, but because you seek God's strength. All those who trust in Jesus are invited to come and join in the feast that God has prepared. Let us sing, let us break bread together on our knees. Number 480. Uh, Inspire us to love, 
that we may serve you as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Jesus, your word made flesh, in the body and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. Somebody like to hold the...
body of Christ broke for us all confused people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
blood of Jesus shed for us. Let us pray. Our God, we have participated in this table sometimes still not fully understanding what you did for us. As the days go on, may it sink in more and more of your love, love for us, and the depths to which you went to bring us back home to you. May we carry this with us, Lord, and as your people go out into the world to be your people to share that love with others who are so in search of it and still don't know about it. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for being here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a story to tell to the nations, folks. Number 48 in the Songs of the Gospel, verses 1, 2, and 3.